Uh, I'm going to begin. I mean, I am. Um, I, I, I met you before at the um, the Rendezvous with French Cinema Uni France uh, event for the Odyssey, and um, I remember sort of asking you what it was that sort of attracted you uh, to playing the part in the Odyssey, and you said your choices are always dictated by some sort of unconsciousness. So I wanted to know if that was the same uh, for for getting involved in Mrs. Mrs. Harris Comes to Paris. In a way, yes, it's always the same thing. I think we have about seven families of characters within us i sort of counted seven um and you always when a character appears uh you always tap into one of these uh seven characters seven families of characters that you are made of and so there is an aristocrat in me of course, although i do not come from an aristocratic family at all but when i was a young boy and an adolescent i had a complete fantasy about really having been um given birth by you know people of the aristocracy that i had been deposited in my family uh you know to be raised but you know these had nothing to do with me and that i was of royal blood and all that i had this crazy fantasy so i can tap into that really easily then as far as this film is concerned tony fabian happens to be a friend of mine and uh, um, i've seen him talk about i listened to him talk about that film oh god for so many years and it was it was lovely when finally the film was happening and uh i could help him you know portray this character and and bring whatever was french about me whatever was um, a sort of fant fantasized version of uh, aristocracy um and to his service so that's that's why i did it i think it's a bit of a cliche that character you know in a way uh, uh he is remember that omar sharif played the character in the version with angela lansbury and so you know he's so perfect you know he's so suave and so uh, and so gentle and 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 you know, um uh i prefer sometimes to play more complex characters but that was my mission to be the sort of the ideal gentleman yeah, but you think in some ways actually having that being the cliche was actually works because we're seeing it through her eyes through mrs harris's eyes and i guess she's a very much a tourist and she she has a very idealistic viewpoint yes it. it's very you, you're totally right stefan it's about her her dream and it's all about you know the, the dress is the initial dream coming to paris is part of the dream the, her view of paris is is also a dream and inside that vision of paris there there are characters she makes them, she, she idealizes them. She doesn't see who they really are. Uh, they, they, they seem to be fitting in this sort of crazy uh, adventure that she's going through. And he's part of the postcard in a way. Um, and I think the, 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 the cliches are, are necessary, as you said, because, because the, she carries them with herself in her mind. Um, I, uh, no, what's good is that he will become hard in spite of himself by telling her that actually she, he likes her simply because she reminds him of a, another cleaner when he was a boy in public school and so um he is so candid in the way that he reveals that and uh, he doesn't realize that it's a very hard thing to hear so that gives him a, a little bit of a nasty edge uh although it's uh, unbeknownst to him he just um, he likes her he associates her with a very nice memory a lovely memory when he was isolated in a public school and he was six yeah i mean the film it's a very it's such an uncynical film it's very charming i mean it really promotes the kind of strength and human kindness there's loads of reasons for films to be made and, and there's lots of purpose for what films can put into the world and what they can reflect back to audiences but do you think sometimes it's just really important and nice to have a story like this <laughs> just presented to the world you know I, well, I was watching the film again last night and um there are elements that are in the air that people like you know they people are very interested in fashion paris has become glamorous again with the help of some series uh, um it's all kind of what people the feel good quality of the film but what i discovered yesterday by seeing the film again was the fact that it was a portrait of a a woman who who discovers her hidden strength she 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 undergoes a sort of personal revolution in the film and although it is glossy and uh, and sweet 
it is actually um, very moving because it's a it's a personal struggle. She she's she's socially insulted um, uh, all the time. You know, she's reminded all the time that she's just a a poor invisible woman, and she discovers that she has the power to change things, the power to live her dream. And I think that makes the film much more interesting than the 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 exterior image of of, of the glossy Parisian postcard of the fifties. Mm. I mean, the thing is, but you say about the sort of the Parisian postcard, I, but I, because I'm from I'm from London, and I sometimes I'll, I'll catch myself when I walk over like a bridge, and I'll see the kind of London landscape, and I sort of get reminded about London, how beautiful it can be, and I see it briefly every now and again from the eyes of a tourist. I just wondered, as someone who sort of grew up sort of near Paris, do you ever see Paris in the way that the movies see Paris, or, or do you ever like stop for a moment, or do, the, the kind of postcard version, I suppose, is that ever something you you see? You know, I, I live in Paris and I live by the river. So um, the, the landscapes that you see, for instance, when the when she walks with the accountant, with Lucas Bravo, um, that's what I see when I walk my dog, you know, and it hasn't changed. Mm. So I am taken aback every time I see these views, these panoramas in Paris. And I just think, oh my God, if I were dropped there for the first time coming from America or, or from anywhere in the world and, and I discovered Paris that way I would think I would fall in love true but you have to remove all the Parisians yeah. of nowadays <laughs> I mean it's a jungle out there so you, you, we have the same monuments we have the same beauty because they have preserved the look of Paris uh, and and hardly anything has changed if for, for 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 decades really uh except that now it's become this complete mad aggressive jungle in the streets so you know we have a mayor in paris who's, who's uh, uh promoted the bicycles uh, but 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 then it creates a, a complete aggr aggressiveness between the car drivers and the scooter drivers and the pedestrians i mean it's everybody's yelling at each other and all uh, so when i was watching the film i was saying to myself ah if only it could be that sweet they, you know because you see a few cars in the film it just doesn't that used to be exactly as we see it in the film in the 50s that's you know there were as as few cars and we've lost a, a little bit of the uh gentility of the but i think i hear that's also being said about london so yeah no, it's, the modern, exactly. it's the modern world for yeah you. lots of traffic in both cities <laughs> wherever you go yeah but um yes yeah. But I was going to ask about um, working with, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, you've worked with some incredible people over your, uh, across your career, but I just wanted to work, speak about working with Leslie because she brings so much humanity uh, to that character and it's such a wonderful character creation. Yeah. I just wondered if you could talk about the collaboration process with, uh, with Leslie on this project. Well, it's so easy to work with Leslie because she's such a fabulous actress that she, I mean, you you find yourself not acting with her because she just uh, she, she she presents to you um, the character and her, all her emotions. She's the, they're there, so you react to that. And then we adored one another because we had such a giggle. And during the fashion show, I mean, we were just in hysterics all the time. I mean, literally, we had to be separated because we were laughing so much. I think she's one of the you know she's one of the great actors actresses of our time um i had the privilege to work with great dames of of, of um your country i i worked with dame judy uh with dame maggie i directed um dame Kristen scott thomas and um and i just sang recently with dame um um oh dear uh um felicity lot and um, forgive me and uh she she is one of them, she is at a very, very, very high level. What? Why does your country produce these people? I still don't understand. Yeah. There is a, there is something about, and I want to say something about actresses. Mm -hmm. um, something that uh, you find nowhere else. It's just, it, and you're right to mention the word humanity. I think all these people that I've mentioned, they have this incredible uh, capacity to, to, to be. I don't know, a warmth, maybe there's an English warmth, uh, um, a delicacy, um, and um, I don't know, she's going to be a dame very soon. 
Yeah, maybe we just have to create great dames to make up for our bad food. That's our kind of, that's what we, we have to bring something to the world. <laughs> no, there's no bad food anymore in England. It's a, it's a, that's a cliche. That's an old yeah, that's, that's true. That is true. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for speaking to me today. Much real, really appreciate it. That's it, Stefan. Yeah, that's, that's all we've got time for. Okay. But, uh, go on, take care. Bye thank bye. you. See you yeah. next time. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!